So our gospel lesson for today, thought I'd read that, so that's one less thing you all have to do, <laughs> is from John chapter 6, verses 25 through 35. And it reads, When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but the, for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What, what, what must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe in you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you all the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to, said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is God's wisdom for God's people. Thanks be to God. Now, I just want to say a few words to introduce our confirmation class of 2019 and tell you a little bit about the journey that they have taken. They began their journey in October of 2018 as we gathered together to build a foundation of faith. And one of the things we talked about is the importance of faith and the importance of building that foundation so that when challenges come along in life, you have that faith to stand up, to stand up on. Uh, they have worked hard over these past 14 months. Uh, we've journeyed from a beginning to talk about who God is, uh, through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, through the Bible, through church history. We spent about two months on the Bible, a lot of time on the Bible, right? Uh, about, we talked about church history. We talked about the sacraments. What is baptism? What is communion? We talked about the history of this church, and actually Ed came and taught that class uh, to give us a little bit of the history of the church. Uh, we talked about forgiveness and grace. We talked about sin. We talked about heaven and hell. And we talked about what comes next in their confirmation journey. And what comes next is their full inclusion in this congregation as members of this church. That will happen next Sunday, on the first Sunday of the church year. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. And we celebrate Happy New Year by welcoming these new confirmation students into the life of the church and celebrating that right together. So I have to tell you all, I'm going to tell you all a secret. This is one of the, this is the most fun thing I do as a pastor, right here. Teaching confirmation, walking with these students as they go through this eighth and ninth grade year, and then sitting here watching them give their testimony, and next Sunday, confirmation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, parents. Thank you, grandparents, for allowing me to walk with your children this year. And now I'm going to introduce Andy, who will be our first testimony today. My name is Andy Rapp. I have been in confirmation since October 2018, and I have learned so much from Pastor Rick. We have learned about so many topics, and I'm going to tell you what I've learned about them throughout my confirmation journey. This is my testament of faith. God is the creator of all things, and you can always know he's around even if you can't see him. We can choose to be godlike in how we go through our everyday lives, such as something small, like opening a door for someone, which makes you feel good inside, because such a small act can impact someone's whole day. Or even something bigger, like volunteering at a food bank. I always enjoy doing that because I feel like I'm doing good work for the world and knowing other people appreciate what I'm doing. We can all be godlike in different ways. God sent his son Jesus to teach us to forgive and love everyone. Jesus showed us by example how to live our lives to be the best person we can be. I remember when I was little in Sunday school, learning that Jesus was a role model, 
And still now I believe that, because Jesus' whole idea was to spread good in the world. I believe Jesus has done so much for, God, for us because of God sending him. The Holy Spirit is like God in action. This is like God doing things in the good world for good. My personal example is when I went on a mission trip and helped at multiple facilities, such as an adult daycare. When we were there, we helped trim the garden, helped the elders play games, and more. It made me feel good inside seeing everybody have so much fun. This is how I experienced the Holy Spirit in my life. The Bible is like a journal of many people talking about how they have experienced God in their lives. Martin Luther was one of the first people to translate the Bible into language that could be more easily understood. The Bible should not be taken literally, but to be understood in the context of the time it was written. One of my favorite Bible verses is Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. It says, With God all things are possible. To me that means, even if I'm not successful at everything, God will still be by my side no matter what. The church provides a structure for a community of people to worship, learn, pray, sing, do mission work, enjoy church activities, and to support each other. You can make lots of friends there and do fun activities like lock-ins. I remember at one of the lock-ins we made pizzas and it was such a fun activity. Church is such an enjoyable place all around. The United Church of Christ is a loving and accepting denomination. It is the responsibility of each church congregation to decide how to carry out the UCC Statement of Faith. The United Church of Christ recognizes two sacraments, baptism and communion, and other special ceremonies such as our confirmation. I believe the UCC is really neat because you can get the base foundation of beliefs, then make your own beliefs around that. The mission of Christians is to become an active Christian by growing in faith and serving the world. You can become more involved by participating in church activities, work to help people in need, and more. One activity is to volunteer for various things. This was my third year volunteering for Vacation Bible School, and I do it because I love to see all the little kids' faces so happy. There are so many ways to be a Christian, and that's just one. We worship to connect ourselves to God and others. We can lead Christian lives by caring for each other and sharing each other's joys and sorrows. Our worship together can help us live more fulfilled lives. The more you come to church and worship, you will be living a more fulfilled life by being surrounded by the people around you who will always be there and support you no matter what, just like God. There are so many people at this church that are so sweet, and seeing all these people here makes my day. Being with the people around you and worshiping with them is why we worship for God and others. God offers us forgiveness and grace, even if sometimes we don't deserve it. God gives us free will to make our own choices and decisions. We can always ask God in prayer to make, guide us to make good decisions. If you do something you regret right away, God knows that everyone makes mistakes and will forgive you if you mess up because God knows nobody is perfect. My parents brought me here to be baptized when I was a baby, but now I feel confirmation is a time when I'm starting to become more responsible for my faith. I'm excited to be a member of this church because I want to be a part of a community of people who are there for you in good and bad times. I'd also like to continue to learn, find ways to help others, and be a good steward of the world. These things will also help me be the best person I can be, and I pray God will guide me in these things. Thank you. My name is Ryan Schinnerberg. I'm a 2019 confirmant. I go to Battle High School where I play football, baseball, and my hobbies are hunting, fishing, and sports. I came to confirmation because I wanted to be a part of, church, of the church that I had grown up in. I also came to learn more about God in the Bible. To me, God is the only person that can put you in and take you out of this world. God gives us options like a multiple choice question on a quiz or test. He gives us the right to sin and the right to choose who we are and who we want to be. One person that we really did talk about in confirmation a lot is Jesus. He is God's son and how he came to show us and teach us the ways of God. And how we all need to find a way to understand ourselves and help one another when we are some or, or someone is in need. We also show, he also showed us how miracles are real. And if we pray, we can talk to God about society's problems. 
One thing we talked about in class was the Holy Spirit. It's what looks over us and what we see when we go to talk to Jesus and it also brings us together like, in, like we are in church right now or in sports like baseball and football. Like my football team at battle, we pray before every game so no, for no injuries and people that would be on the field. One thing Pastor Rick really nailed into our heads is that the Bible was a love story. It had always been a love story about us and God, and it was also a book of wisdom. Our mission as Christians is to help one another, like we would help our families and friends, because it's basically the golden rule, which is treat others how you would want to be treated. The church is important to me because of all the people who are here and the sort of connection that we have here. Even if you don't know someone here, being here is just one of the connections that we have. We all go to this church. Another thing I like about the church is what kind of church we are. We're a united church of Christ, which means that we are all united as one, just as my football coach said when he preached it to us. He said that we are coached up as a unit, we are supposed to play as a unit, we lose as one, and we win as one. I've been lucky to grow up in this church, and I wish I wish to be as with, with it as long as possible. Thank you. I remember Piercy, a freshman at Haven High School. The most noteworthy thing about me is I love my family. It's such a roller coaster of a life, and a sermon Pastor Rick preached that stuck with me is that everything outside of God is distraction. At a naive perspective, the challenges we are given can be handled in such a negative way. But to learn the underlying meaning behind every endeavor, you can truly know God. Our main reaction to the unknown is fight, flight, or free. And by letting myself know God, I truly feel free. God to me is a universal sign of love. In my mind, I have a clear image of Jesus with all of his disciples around his feet. This is a good visual representation of how God's love is endless. At age five, it was very clear how religion was displayed in other households. I Kissed a Girl by Katy Perry was a popular song at the time, and a boy sung it in my class. Repeating the words, I was laughed at by other girls and told that what I was singing was wrong. At such a young age, a list of man-made rules was impressed upon them and told that it was the word of God. Annually, we learn about Jesus' birth in church. It would make sense that he would be half human and half divine because he was born of Mary. However, I learned that this was not accurate. My perspective changed when learning that God was made up of three personas, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But they're all one and the same. This was God's way of living vicariously through Jesus and a love way to act directly with mankind and understand our sins. The parable of the bird tells us of a man who died of God. When trying to save birds from snow, realized that they would have no way to trust him to leave them to safety. This is a good way of how the Holy Spirit works when you are being a steward of God. It may not be apparent that all your actions show the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit empowers us as Christians to work miracles. Throughout history, a series of diaries were translated from languages and denominations preserved in modern day. This isn't like a textbook read as facts. It was meant to be interpreted as morals. Yet, false preachings find their way into churches from a verse, you shall not live with mankind as with womankind, it is an abomination, Leviticus 18.22, but openly disregard Leviticus 19.18, which says, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, for you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. God made us all in his image, yet the hate formed against each other is not very godlike. The easiest way to have a reliable support system is through the church. I was nervous to do things such as youth group, and the summer we went to Hiram Farms, it was a bit of a leap into the unknown. However, the bonds I formed over this week-long trip 
for ones long overdue. Being active in the church, we form the youth choir, and you can really see how being involved influences the church. This church is historically significant to my family since it was formed. My great-grandma attended as a college student, and when it burned down, our family moved to the new location, and at one point in time, my mom played in the Adam parts when she was younger. My siblings and I have been played in every square inch of the church, and regardless of the other churches that I've attended, this church truly allows children to grow and thrive as they should. As Christians, our mission is to love one another. During the summer, I had a job to paint a butterfly mural with resident arts. This was commissioned through the children's growth with the goal to spread kindness. The butterfly effect is a theory that a butterfly can flutter its wings over a flower in China and can cause a hurricane in the Caribbean, which was interpreted as how kindness can affect a whole generation of youth. Their mission isn't that far from the mission of Christians. By loving each other and helping others, we act in God's image. My very spiritual father, friend's father told me how different forms of worship bring us closer to God. The most direct is to pray. Life is guaranteed to have its rough patches, but it's important to give God a second to listen to what troubles us. Although God doesn't perform miracles to get us out of our struggles, he gives us the strength to get through them. When we give ourselves the time to reflect, we can focus on the needs of others, and we can connect to our mission. With the freedom to do as we please, there's the option of sin. Yet God understands that we make mistakes and forgives us. The actions of others are not in my control, but my reactions towards them are. Although people may cause us discomfort, it's important to forgive them, whether it is to heal the issue or to put your mind at rest. Most importantly is to be grateful, which is loving unconditionally to those who have wronged us, because we are all God's children. Growing up without being baptized meant I had a more loose translation of what attending church meant than other families. The memories I've made here and the journey this church has taken me along is something that encourages me to strive to be a full member. This church really is my home, and now that I'm being confirmed, I know I've made the right choice.